Hi, so I thought today I would do a video on my most used winter bags of 2021 and into 2022. I'm one of these people who does divide their bags into se well, quite seasonally. I tend to use Louis Vuitton and lighter coloured bags in the spring and summer and I tend to use my all leather bags and darker coloured bags in the winter. Obviously there's no right or wrong, it, it just feels right to me. I have five bags that I'm going to share with you today and nearly all of them are leather with the exception of one and I'm going to do that as a part one and then my part two will be the most used summer and spring bags of 2021. It seems quite a long time ago doesn't it but I think these roundup videos are quite useful. So before we get started with the bags, I've had a few questions on the jewellery I wear and I just thought I'd show you what I'm wearing today. Actually, these are my everyday rings. So um, I wear a selection of eternity rings and they are full eternity rings because I have um, quite big joints but quite slim fingers behind the joints. And because my rings turn around a lot, I actually find that Eternity rings aren't a waste on me. I really enjoy them. Otherwise, I spend the whole day turning the ring round. So the bottom ring here is my wedding band, which is platinum and diamond from Tiffany. The second one and the one above it, the, the next two, are rings that my husband has bought me over the years at auction. Gold with yellow diamonds. I'm not sure whether you can see them. And um, the one above that is uh, platinum with white diamonds and I always, if I'm buying at auction, I mean Tiffany's diamonds are by default, but if I'm buying at auction, the lowest colour grade of diamond I will buy is G2H and a VS1 or VS2 clarity. Um, and diamonds are so easy to grade and label that there's no reason why you can't buy them at um, at auction. You don't need to buy them from a top house to ensure getting a, a, a nice grade of diamond because the good auction houses classify them anyway. Um, so that's on that hand. And then on this hand, I have a, one of my favorite rings, which is, it's a rose gold and diamond eternity ring also. And this is, I really love it. It has sort of a bobbled effect on the inside, which actually reminds me pretty much of uh, the Van Cleef Pele, the new Van Cleef and Arpels Pele collection. Um, but I love this ring and it's a true rose gold with um, beautiful diamonds and again all, all the way around. I don't know if you can um, see it sparkling in the sun but it's a, a really lovely ring. And on my left arm I'm wearing the Hermes bracelet I got for Christmas. I haven't really taken it off. I absolutely love it and stacking it with um, with different things. And then in my ears, I've got my uh, diamond and platinum studs, which are from Tiffany, actually. My husband bought them for me for my 40th birthday. And I have to say that apart from my wedding band, if I could only have one other piece of jewellery, it would be a pair of diamond studs. These are half a carat in each ear. And I just find that, again, as you get older, diamonds by your face <laughs> give you a bit of light and a bit of lift on those days when you're feeling quite old. So um, yeah, I, I really love these. So that's that's the jewellery I'm wearing today. So onto the bags, and I do apologise about the glare, but I don't really have anywhere else to film. The, su the sun is falling, it's late afternoon, it's been the most stunning day in the UK. So the first bag I want to share with you is one I, d to be fair, I do wear all year round, um, but it is the most useful of, of all my bags probably, and it is the Pochette Felicie. This is the um, version in epi leather with beautiful microfiber interior and um, silver hardware, which I absolutely love. And the strap, I'm not sure if you can, the strap is detachable with a massive lobster clasp, um, which you can see there quite well, I think, but it's fully detachable and you can use it on other bags or even as a belt it's it's super and this is a fabulous crossbody bag doesn't fit very much but it comes with this great case or pouch which i use in all my bags for you know paracetamol and other bits and bobs that i need to carry with me every day and epi leather is just so durable 
I don't think there are any marks on this and I wear it all the time. Supermarket because it's small and I know I won't bash it and if I want to be out all day it's um, a super bag because it's uh, it's so light. So I'm sorry the sun really is quite bad. I hope you can see that. It's a great crossbody bag or on the on the shoulder but it weighs nothing and if you're going to an antique market or an art fair or something like that it's just a, a really super bag to carry with you all day and um, you know it fits quite a sizable pouch inside but it's big enough to fit a wallet car keys and a phone a small wallet that is but it also comes with a card holder um, so you can use just that and put a bit of cash in the back and uh, fit your phone and keys and, and you're away. I can do a proper review of this bag if anyone's interested. One thing I will just add is I've been sorely tempted to get it in. It now comes in this gorgeous giant monogram and uh, pattern and I'm thinking of getting it in this pattern as well because I really love this pattern. I think it's so dynamic. Um, but obviously it is a bit in your face. And the great thing about this, I'm not sure if you can see, but it says Louis Vuitton on the um, on the silver button there. I don't think you might be able to see that. And it says LV here, but apart from that, it's very understated. No one would know that this is a Louis Vuitton bag and you're not gonna be targeted for your bag when you're carrying this. Plus it, you know, it's, it sits so close, so close to the body. So moving right along, this bag you will recognise is the Louis Vuitton Boulogne, which was released last year. And I've done lots of videos on this bag, so I probably don't need to talk about it um, too much more. But this was my transition summer to into fall bag, and I wore it throughout most of late September and October. I found it uh, such a useful bag. It's a really good size. It's obviously significantly significantly bigger than the, um, the Felicie. Although, I mean, lengthwise, it's not that different, but widthwise, it's dramatically different. Um, and I wore this a lot in, in uh, late August and October, as I say, and it's holding up incredibly well, as I, as I thought it would. So, uh, really fantastic bag, and it's so light, and um, I think it's lovely worn as, you know, under the arm, like this, or, um, you know, over the arm, that's how I wear it. I, I do see it as a shoulder bag more than anything, but it's um, super smart bag, super light, and um, fits enough if you're going out for the entire day and doesn't break your arm doing it. I will link the videos that I've done on this below. I've compared it to the Push Up Mati and I've um, done a dedicated video on this bag. So um, I won't say much more about it now. So my next bag might surprise you. It's an oldie but goodie and I will wear this come what may, whatever the fashionistas say. Technically, I suppose it's gone out of style, although I read a Vogue article um, last, I think last December, which said that it was definitely coming back into style. But I don't care whether it's in style or not in style, I love it. And it's such an easy bag to use. And in my mind, to my mind, it is definitely a winter bag. So this is the Balenciaga City Bag in size small. And it's in black calfskin and it is the mock croc leather. And uh, I have had this bag for a long time. And not a long time, four years, five years? No, maybe five years. Um, and I think it's in great shape and I really wear this bag. I carry it all the time just because it is such an easy bag to use. So you might see this bag with a lot more sort of trailing tails on it, wrap tails my husband calls them, but anyway, I've tucked those in on the side so I've changed the silhouette somewhat. But um, there you can see being Balenciaga Paris and the, uh, the code is, oops, the code is underneath, I think you can just see it there. Um, this has two pockets on this side where I've got my keys and my uh, hand sanitizer. On this side, there is a 
big pocket which has my phone in it and that's the 11 or 13 plus size um, I've got my mini pochette, I have that pouch, that black epi pouch I just showed you, and I have um, quite a sizeable wallet in it actually. That's a, a, my mid-size Dior wallet. And it just fits, which I also think is quite wintry by the way. <laughs> um, so this is my all-time favourite winter bag and I just love, it's such an easy bag to use. It's such a great size. I think it's about 30 centimetres in length. It's only about six centimetres wide and I think it's about 11 tall. Um, but oh, and I love the handles. I have the woven leather handles. But to me, this is such a smart bag. Um, it's a very wintry bag in my opinion. Gosh, the sun is moving, I do apologise. Um, I wonder if I can get out of it. Can you still see me if I'm here? So, um, lovely length of strap, and I think this is one of the few bags that looks good on me crossbody. So this is the, one of the few that I will carry crossbody, and it really sort of moulds to your body. And um, as I say, this is the small, not the mini. So it fits quite a lot and it's probably bigger than you're used to seeing. seeing. It also fall, uh, falls in a really good place if you wear it on the side and then obviously um, as a shoulder bag as well. And the strap itself is a, is a fabulous strap. It's adjustable and it has this very generous shoulder pad, I guess which makes it very comfortable to carry for long periods of time. And the strap is fully detachable. So I just think this is a great all round bag. The back is, whoops, much, <laughs> dropping it. The back is much plainer and um, there is no branding on this bag. So you, you can't tell that it is a designer bag. I don't think they sell these anymore, certainly not in this style, although they do sell similar at Balenciaga these days. So the last two bags I want to share with you are all these book goodies also, and they are both Chanel bags. And I've had one of them for a very long time, and it is the classic flat bag in lambskin in medium size and it has silver hardware. And this is um, an old bag. I've had this for, I think I got it in something like um, 2008 maybe. And as you can see, I think the lambskin is in absolutely super condition. It does have some creasing on the back. Um, but the front looks almost as good as it did when I got it. And I have worn this bag. I used to wear it for work quite a lot, um, for fancy, for evening events, um, when I was hosting big dinners and stuff. Um, I didn't used to wear it, obviously, for the office every day. I wouldn't do that. I don't think you should wear designer bags to work, but I was. But anyway, um, yeah, so I used to wear it quite a lot and I have worn this a lot this Christmas for um, for dinners, for going out, for... Um, I wouldn't just wear this to the supermarket. I don't believe these look great with jeans, but then maybe I'm old-fashioned. And I have to say, I was put off these for many, many years because it was a bag carried by my, um, by my mother's friends, so I always used to see it as an old lady bag. And also, I find it, I know people say how generous it is compared to the small, but I find it very small. There's the pochette Felice, and here is the medium, um, the medium Chanel, and you could not fit this inside this. And that's because of the bag within a bag style, which, you know, is, is fun. Um, but this inner bag, which is basically what it is, takes up an awful lot of space. An awful lot of space within the bag so um, I don't find this a very practical all uh, very practical all day bag but I do find it a very lovely going out luxurious bag um, 
or even uh, wedding bag, but I do wear it more in the winter than I, I do in the summer. And I definitely feel like taking it out over Christmas and New Year. It's one of my favorite bags to, to do that with. My favorite bag, however, came in this Karl Lagerfeld dust bag with the lovely Chanel drawing on it, which um, I love this from Lagerfeld. I think it's one of his most brilliant creations. Um, and this is my favorite Chanel bag. And it is the Chanel reissue in the size 26 in the um, distressed calfskin. So my story with this is quite similar to my story with the Dior bag. I had this bag. I bought it when it first came out, when the price was still very high, but not the extortionate amount it is now. And then I, I sold it, believing that I didn't need such an extravagant bag in my new country life. And then over recent years, I've come to regret that I sold it because of course I still do have to dress up and go to nice things, not as often, but, um, and this bag I particularly missed. This bag is such a great size. And I will try and step back out of the sun so that you can, so you can see the size difference perhaps on these bags. And um, the reissue, this one, is uh, the reissue 26, and this is the medium. So this is about two centimetres bigger and wider than this one, and it actually makes a massive difference. People say this is in between the uh, medium and the jumbo, but I think it's closer to the medium than it is the jumbo, than it is the jumbo. I'm not a fan of the jumbo. I think it, it looks so, this style of bag just looks too big once it takes on those proportions. Um, but that's just my view. This is um, a bag within a bag, uh, again, and it's in the most fabulous condition. See, it's made in France, and it came as a full set, and I bought this, so that came, it came with the dust bag, the box, the um, authenticity card, and um, in absolutely fabulous condition. I, in fact, I think this bag has barely been worn and I got it from Design Exchange and I got it, uh, I replaced it, the one that I'd sold. So my warning to you is <laughs> don't sell things that will be really difficult to replace if there is a slim chance in the future you could need them or want them again. So I know a lot of people are talking about luxury minimalism and if you buy carefully, hopefully you shouldn't end up with hundreds and hundreds of bags, but also don't sell things too quickly. Um, and I have really enjoyed using this over the last few months and it is still in great condition. I hopefully haven't put any damage onto it, but I will be careful with these bags because they are worth too much money to abuse and I don't have the funds while well, I don't I wouldn't have the appetite either no matter how much money I had to keep replacing things because I'd trash them anyway I adore this bag it's such a beautiful bag to use and the chain is a work of art and this was designed by Karl Lagerfeld by the way I will do a, a, a review of these bags a lot of people say erroneously that this was de designed by Chanel but it wasn't it was a Karl Lagerfeld edition um, so I will do a review of the medium and the, um, and the reissue because I have quite a bit to say about them in their historical context. Thank you for putting up with the sun as well. I hope it hasn't damaged this video too much. I have to <laughs> see during editing what it's done to it. But as I say, thank you for your patience with the sun. It's just been such a gorgeous day today in the UK. It seems a shame to block it out. So those were my most used bags this winter so far, but I can't see much changing. And uh, the one I'm most enthusiastic about, as you can probably see, is the Balenciaga City Bag. I just think it is the most fabulous invention. Anyway, I hope that was useful in some measure. If you'd like me to do reviews on any of the bags individually, please let me know. And until then, take great care. Bye.